On behalf of St. Peter's Lutheran Church, we welcome you to worship. If you have not been with us before or are not receiving the weekly emails on each Saturday, I encourage you to drop me a note so we can add you to that list and keep you in the loop. Today we continue our Easter celebration throughout these 50 days, um, and we focus on the walk to Emmaus and Jesus eating with his disciples following the resurrection. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life, to you be all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the third chapter. Peter addressed to the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by your own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for all the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have indeed put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Our second reading is from 1 John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves, just as He is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. 
Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. We join together. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust your word. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. We give you thanks and praise this day for the gifts and the blessings that you give to us. And yet so often we miss those gifts because we focus on the wrong things or simply our eyes are closed. We pray now that you would open not only our eyes, but our hearts and our ears to receive your word and send us out to proclaim the Easter joy. We pray this in Jesus' name, and together we say, Amen. Well, today's gospel reading begins in the middle of the story. This is the road to Emmaus. Listen to the beginning. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the things about himself in all the scriptures. 
As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from his sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And while they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Well, how often do we miss the whole picture because we are caught up in one moment? And the reverse is also true. How often do we miss the moments because we're so focused on the big picture? Well, last week I woke up in North Carolina. I was excited to get down to the ocean. I walked across the street and up the boardwalk that carries visitors over the sand hill. The sound of the ocean was drawing me in. And as I walked over the hill, I saw the grasses blowing and the waves crashing. Oh, how I missed this view. I couldn't get down to the water fast enough. And I began walking. I noticed the pattern of the waves, but then I realized I was missing the shells and the patterns in the sand. So I walked along and studied the sand and the shells and was surprised when I looked up to see a windsurfer on the horizon. Before I knew it, an hour had passed. Well, after sitting for a bit, I began the walk back. A walk an hour out, a walk an hour back. So I strolled for that hour picking up shells, taking pictures of wind and sand. And then I realized I was so enamored with the sound and the waves of the ocean, I forgot to notice one important detail, the number marker for my boardwalk to get back to my temporary home. Suddenly my focus became fixated on the boardwalks, the hills of sand and the houses surrounding. It was then that I noticed handrails peeking from the sand and realized those were still the effects of Hurricane Dorian blowing the wind and the waves up onto shore. I noticed the new construction projects. What I did not see, however, was my boardwalk. I had been so absorbed in my own little world, I did not realize how far I had walked. Well, our walk to Emmaus is much like that. They're absorbed in the events that had passed. They were absorbed in their grief after the crucifixion and death of their teacher and friend. They were so focused on the events that had passed, they missed Jesus walking with them in the present. And then Jesus spoke. And here's my favorite verse today. While in their joy... They were disbelieving and still wondering. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and wondering. That is the paradox of being Easter people. Because we believe in Jesus, because we believe Jesus rose from the dead, we can live in joy. Not always happiness, but real joy. Because we are Easter people, we know the rest of the story. We can still wonder and question and even disbelieve at times. But how often do we lose sight of the things that are important? How often are we hyper-focused on the small details that we miss the big picture? Or we're so focused on the big picture that we miss the small important details? We focus on getting ahead at work, and we miss our children growing up. We focus on our children's activities that we miss growing apart in our marriage. 
We focus on the perfect house or the perfect holiday, and we miss the treasures that we already have. We focus so much on what we want worship to be that we miss worshiping where we are. We focus on using scripture to say what we want it to say that we miss that love one another parts. Or we focus on who we want Jesus to be and we miss who Jesus actually speaks to us. The good news is Jesus still walks with us today, waiting to reveal himself to us. And even when we doubt, even in those moments of disbelief, Jesus is there. Jesus did not stay dead in the tomb. Jesus is risen. And that is the good news that brings us joy. It's all about balance. You can't have one without the other. You can't have the resurrected Christ without a death. You can't have Easter without Good Friday. You can't have the ending without the beginning. And you definitely can't have the big picture without the details. Well, this Easter season, we've joined with Emmanuel Napoleon to walk and pray Henry County. And it's not too late to join in the walk. So let me encourage you. Lace up your shoes and take a walk. Say a quick prayer. Ask God to open your eyes for what you might see along your journey. And then as you walk, notice the details around you. Notice the homes and say a quick prayer of God's blessings upon each person who lives there. Notice what's in the yard or the storefront. Notice where there might be a need. Notice the joys of the world around you. My friends, we are Easter people. True joy can be ours. True hope is ours. But that doesn't mean life is perfect. We can have doubts like Thomas. We can miss the big picture or the small details like the two that were on the road to Emmaus. We can cry out like David in the Psalms, and we can dance like Miriam once they cross the Red Sea. Because we are Easter people. Jesus died for you and for me. Jesus rose from the dead for you and for me. Jesus meets us in the breaking of the bread and the wine outpoured. So let us rejoice and be glad together. Because together we can sing, Christ has triumphed, he is living. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Thank you.
Joining with the saints of every time and age, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we and this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and our bold witness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all time and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we offer to God our gifts, our time, and our talents, let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.